Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to quickly pop in here and do a little video for people that are finishing their university degrees this year because 2020 is a very weird year. Um, everything seems to be going wrong and nothing's going right and it's a bit of a scary time. And it also has massively affected people in education. Like my brother is in year 11, so he has had his GCSEs canceled. But I know also a lot of people are finishing uni, like my sister's in her final year of uni and it's just, it doesn't feel like a final year of uni, does it? So I've got some notes here on ways I think might help a little bit and things to focus on if you're finishing an art degree. Specifically, I did illustration, but I'm sure this could apply to quite a few. So if you studied an art degree and you're finishing, these are just some things that I recommend. The first thing I've put down is celebrate. When you finish a degree, I, I remember when I finished, final year was hard, like it was really tough and I put a lot of work in and I didn't get that much time off and it was like a stress, it was a really stressful time and that final moment when we handed in our work and we went out for drinks at the beach and like it was like a memory I hold quite close to my heart, it was a really nice like it was the most like the weight was off my chest. So now since you've probably done your hand ins or you're about to do your hand ins you, you won't be able to do that. You can't all get together, but that doesn't mean you can't ever. So it is a weird time. We're just gonna all have to accept it's a weird, difficult, not very nice time, but you can all get together. So I think number one is just to organize. I'm sure you already have, but just make sure you get all your friends together and try and arrange after this, after social distancing has been removed, that you can all um, celebrate, like go for some drinks, celebrate, look back at your old times. Like I think, graduations are still happening like my sister's one has been postponed i think most are being postponed i don't they're not going to take graduations away from people i hope not anyway um so you'll get to do that then but it's also nice to just arrange it as soon as we can go out celebrate have some drinks reminisce about your uni life exhibitions so my degree was all targeted kind of towards that final exhibition like we put all of our work up on the final deadline and it was assessed like as part of the exhibition so since exhibitions have unfortunately been cancelled i mean some might have been postponed but i th actually think a lot of unis have cancelled their exhibitions and it's not even just your university exhibition like there's new designers new blood there's lots of london exhibitions that also aren't happening and they were very beneficial and helpful to me so i thought of some alternatives that hopefully might be able to help and one of those is a virtual exhibition. So I've seen this done a few times, but there's been a few exhibitions I've planned to go to and they've done this and I actually think it works really well. So maybe if your course has like a Facebook page or a group or, you know, contact your friends, get the word out and just arrange a day, maybe like a Saturday or something, where you can do an exhibition. So you all get together, you have a hashtag, or if you're doing it on Instagram, I think it's the easiest place to do it. You have a hashtag for your exhibition. You all choose like a piece of work or a few pieces of work and you post it to your Instagram stories with this hashtag, I can't speak, hashtag. And then everybody will post their work and then you'll share everyone's work. So then on your story, you'll have a piece of everyone's work from who's chosen to be part of this. And then, you know, that gets it out there. So instead of just your people are seeing yours and everybody, you know some people have these big followings so everybody's connections get to see everybody's work and it's also just nice for you to have all of your kind of years work in one place so yeah virtual exhibitions specifically on instagram can be really good and people have done art fairs that way too so people have something they're selling and then everybody posts and then once again everyone shares everyone's post and then like it's only on stories it's gone after a day but i think it's a bit of fun it's nice and you can kind of um <laughs> So my, my, um, my camera ran out of battery, so I'm back. So yeah, Instagram exhibitions, virtual art fairs, that can work really nicely. It can be fun, you can see everybody's work and have it all in one place. But once this gets lifted, and I think like towards the end of the summer, hopefully the restrictions will start to be lifted. And then I think get in touch with local, maybe your university town or maybe somewhere else, like London, I don't know places where you know and I think university towns work nicely because people like to be part of the like, wider community so if you get in touch with local pubs um coffee shops restaurants coffee shops and pubs I think are the best but maybe community centers 
I think you're going to have to judge that based on your town. But in my uni in Falmouth, people did this a lot with pubs. Um, we had a few in a local coffee shops and it worked really nice. So ask them if they'd be willing to do like a one day or one evening exhibition and everybody just has a frame of work or a piece of work and maybe they're there with their work. That that We did that in a pub in Falmouth and it was really fun and it was great like that they allowed that. Or maybe the work's just hanging up and it only has to be for an evening and then you just invite people to come and see it and it, it benefits both because you're getting an audience for your work, you're also getting an exhibition which you maybe missed out on because of um, this situation but also the pubs getting customers, people are coming in, buying drinks, looking at work um, so it's quite nice and you can take this into your own hands, you don't have to rely on your university to do shows you can always set up your own shows, you can always team up with a group of people always going to be an option for you so don't worry too much about exhibitions and also on the note of exhibitions I found New Designers was amazing for me and that specific show has a one year in section which I also did where they select a few graduates and you're going to put yourself forward to have an exhibition the year after you finish university so there's other options out there have a look at what's local to you London cities I mean I'm sure other cities have even more events so just have a little look around and apply for other exhibitions art fairs are good too so once all the social distancing is removed there's a lot more options for you it's not the end of the world that you've missed out on your grad show I don't actually know anybody I sold one print <laughs> but I don't know anyone that got work from the university grad show maybe it's like location dependent but it's it's more of a celebration than it is like your lifeline for getting work so definitely don't get too upset about that and okay what have I written down? Having to check my notes. My next one is to make work you want to do. Oh my gosh, I did not phrase that very well. Um, make work you would like to get hired for. This is the best tip because <laughs> this is like helpful for me now. It's always been helpful for me. Someone they told us they told this to us in our final year of university, and I actually can't believe how beneficial it is. So for my final year, I did a lot of editorial work none of it was commissioned i'll post some pictures of it on the screen now and i basically i went onto online websites news articles etc i picked a few on topics i wanted to illustrate and i literally just treated it like it was a commission i made an illustration for the article obviously it was never going to get used but it then can go in my portfolio and show people that yeah like this girl can do editorial illustrations and when i took that portfolio to new york to show like art directors they really liked that like a lot of them thought it was real like they didn't know it was fake and yeah you can say like speculative like don't lie don't like say yeah I did this work for the Guardian and you didn't you don't need to lie because it doesn't tell the truth but also just have it speculative work they don't care really they can see that you can do it and that's what they want to see so definitely make work you want to do editorial pick articles out um, literally go through a whole editorial project and make illustrations for that packaging pick products you like to you wish you could do packaging design for um, I'll put some images here of ones I did for that as well so and I still do this now like whenever you get a spare moment do personal work but do it like you would like to get hired for so for me I wanted to get hired for more food and drink illustrations I spent quite a bit of time just doing a few food illustrations to stick them on my Instagram and eventually a publisher actually contacted me through my Instagram and I got a cookbook job from that, um, from those pieces I put on there and I have a really small Instagram following, like it was less than a thousand, I think it was only about 800 and I still got found on there and I got a like one of my favourite jobs I've ever had so definitely post work do work you want to get hired for and post it on your social medias um, and send it to people etc leading on to the next point sending work out to publishers um, art directors etc so if you get your portfolio and you choose the pieces you're really happy with don't send someone like 100 pieces the, the chances they probably won't open the email if it's a big email so find some contacts, look into jobs you'd really like to do, do a little bit of online stalking, um, LinkedIn can be quite helpful for that, but also sometimes actually list it in the back of magazines, the contact for the art directors, so have a little, um, a little look, and send some emails out, don't send loads, 
you know, the chances you probably won't get many replies, but they might have seen it. And make sure the email's personalised. Personalise it to, like, you know, put the person's name in the email, show that you understand the newspaper or book or, you know, what you're going for. Make sure it doesn't look like spam, basically. No one wants a spam email. But if you send a personalised email out to some people, hopefully you'll start to get like the odd response or people will start to see it and save your name. And that's kind of what you want. You can also send postcards. If you made postcards for your grad show, which I know probably a lot of people did and you didn't get to use them, send them out to some art directors, send them out to some magazines, you know, send them out to people. And people, if they like it, they pin it on their desk and maybe you'll get contacted. Contacted? It. That's not a word. Maybe you'll get contacted like straight away or maybe it'll be like six months, a year down the line, someone contacts you and it's all about that postcard that you sent. So it can actually be really beneficial. So I would recommend doing that if you have postcards spare that you've made. And shows art fairs. Okay, the next one is, and I'm sure this isn't relevant to everybody, but it was def it's definitely relevant to me and I'm sure it's relevant to a lot of people. Don't be scared to get a part-time job. When you finish, it's university, and especially if you want to go into freelance work, it's really hard. I, I'm not gonna um, sugarcoat that. It's very difficult. It can feel like you're the smallest fish, maybe not even a fish, maybe just like a bit of plankton, um, and you're in this big wide ocean and nobody is seeing your stuff and you're just show, putting it out into the world and no one cares. <laughs> Um, and that's not true. Eventually people will, like people will find things, but it's very hard. So I would say make work you want to make, sell work if you want to do that, art fairs, you know, that's a really good stream of income. Um, but also don't be afraid of doing a part-time job. Like I worked just over six months in m and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, they got me out of the house, seeing people, chatting away, like, you know, making friends and just being out in the world and actually I, you know, I don't regret it. I actually only quit because I had a morning shift that started at um, 6 a.m. I had to wake up at 4.30, um, like 5 a.m. And then I got glandular fever and yeah, uh, you don't need my life story, but that's the only reason I quit. I actually really enjoyed it. And now I part-time teach kids art. I can't speak. My mind is all over the place at the moment, but I teach kids art part-time. So I run some, I don't run them, but I'm with a company that does after school clubs for kids um so it's art it's an art after school clubs so i'm the only person that goes in so we they have a few other teachers um and i go to a few primary schools different ones each day just in the afternoon and i run an art class to about 20 kids and aged from like 4 to 11 i think and i absolutely love it like i really really enjoy it and it goes really nicely with freelance work because getting out of the house is something you might not do that often if you can't afford a studio space or you're like me and you don't actually live near any studio places and it's like, is it worth the money? Like, yeah. So yeah, don't be afraid of getting a part-time job. Don't make that think, don't let that make you think that you're not succeeding. Like I've seen so many people online, I've listened to so many podcasts of people that literally didn't get a job until like 10 years after their degree or 20 years even in some cases. Like some people give up and then they go back to it. Some people just spring right into it. Um, and then there's always gonna be breaks in between. You're always gonna have years that are more successful and years that aren't as successful. And it's all, it's all a curve, <laughs> um, but it will be okay. And I think just keep making work, don't give up and feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. I will always try and answer. I'm by no means a pro, but I'm always happy to put my opinion in there. Um, and yeah, I can't think of much else. I'm so sorry if it is you that has just finished your degree um, in 2020. Sounded like such a good year, didn't it, 2020? But now I think everyone's gonna remember it for this and not for, you know, anything else so my heart goes out to you it really does if you have any questions at all please put them in here um, in the comments or message me on instagram and i'll try and get back to you and yeah um, good luck with everything and i shall see you in the next video if you did enjoy this video and you like videos on illustration art or design um, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe it really means an awful lot to me and i will see you again next week bye guys Mm-hmm.